Welcome to this month's edition of What's New for Apps Admins, where we cover the new features that have rolled out in Google Apps over the last month. My name is Stephen Long and I'm a member of the Google for Work training team and I'll be sharing with you the November updates. Let's take a look at our agenda. We'll start with our headline news, then talk about some admin specific updates, some changes that'll affect your end users, and finally some recently updated mobile apps. So starting with the headline news, hot off the presses is the new Google Apps Administrator Fundamentals course. This is an online course for all you Google Apps admins just getting started or those of you who want to brush up on your skills. It has videos to walk you through common scenarios, exercises to practice what you've learned, and quizzes so you can test your knowledge. And you can check out the course on your desktop or mobile device. This course also prepares you to take the Certified Google Apps Administrator exam. Find out more at the admin certification site, certification.googleapps.com forward slash admin. If you want to try out the training, just click take the course. Let's look at the admin updates for November. We'll start with the admin provisioning of individual Google Plus profiles. Previously, as a Google Apps admin, you had no way to give people in your organization a Google Plus profile so they can connect with other employees and encourage collaboration and sharing in your organization. With this launch, you can now create individual profiles via the admin console. The ability to create profiles in bulk is coming soon. This is how it works. For people with Google Plus enabled who have yet to create a profile, you can create a basic Google Plus profile on their behalf. This basic profile includes only the user's name. You must certify the employee is 18 plus years of age or specify a birthday. After you've completed this action, the user will receive a Google Plus welcome email explaining the action taken by you in the admin console. Users can then update their profile with a profile photo, circles and other information. Let's look at this in the admin console. Select more Google Apps, then go to Google Plus, then select Profile. You'll see a list of users in your organization. Some users will have a profile status of active and you can view these profiles. Some users have a profile status of not created and you can create a basic profile for each of these users. Let's scroll down and create a Google Plus profile for a user now. Click Create Profile and then we see a pop-up box with some information about the different terms and some of the requirements. You see we have two options here. I have read these terms and certify the user is over 18 years of age or you simply just give the user's date of birth. Here I'm going to click Create. And when I go back into Profile the next time, we'll see now that this user is an active status and now I can view their profile. The user will be notified via email that I've created a basic Google Plus profile for them. And if you click on View Profile, you can see now that it's brought me to this brand new Google Plus page created specifically for this user. Notice how there's no profile picture, no circles, just the user's name. This launch applies to Google Apps for Work, Unlimited, Government, and Higher Education EDU domains only. K-12 EDU domains are excluded. Also, People using Picasa or with a public chat photo are not eligible to be upgraded by an admin and must create their own profile. How discoverable are these profiles on the web? Well, the user's name, optional profile photo, tagline and cover photo are always public and people will see these if they visit the user's profile page. But remember, you can already control whether your user's profiles can be indexed and found by search engines. If we go back to our Google Plus section of the admin console and this time go to sharing settings, you'll see in the sharing settings there's a section called profile discoverability. As an admin, you can set this. As you can see on the left here, we've got an organizations list, which means this setting can be set differently for different orgs. And also if you just set it for your parent org, it will be inherited by all the child orgs below it. If checked, the people outside your domain can find your user's profiles in search results. So this configures the default profile discoverability setting for users in your domain. It's important to note that any user can change their own personal discoverability settings from this default. You can find out more by checking out the update announcements and the help articles by following the links below the slide in this presentation. The next update we'll talk about is the additional Gmail reports added to the new Aggregate Reports dashboard. In October, we added a new feature to the Admin Console reporting called Aggregate Reports. Aggregate reports are designed to provide domain level trends across multiple apps. Admins can select their favorite reports for regular tracking. 
Building on this recent release, we've launched additional time series reports for Gmail with the goal of providing admins more visibility into Mailflow. Let's look at this in the admin console. If we go to reports, so after you select reports, you'll immediately see the new aggregate reports section. Use the My Reports menu to select the various types of reports for areas such as Accounts, Gmail, Drive and Google+. Click the Select Reports icon to change the charts the My Reports page displays. The new update this month includes new Gmail reports for inbound mail, delivery, spam and encryption, and for outbound mail, delivery and encryption, as well as the total emails which was already there. If you select those and hit apply, we're going to see these now in the My Reports section. If I now go to My Reports and click Total Emails, this gives me an overview of emails received and sent over the whole domain over time. The reports show historical data generated over the last seven days, the last month, the last three months, or the last six months. The date in the upper right corner indicates the most recent day for which all the report data is available. You can see that highlighted in green. You can also export to a Google Sheet or download data to a CSV file. For more detail on these new reports, check the Gmail section of Aggregate Reports Help Center. And again, follow the links below the slides. The next update we're going to see is increased visibility and control with OAuth token audit reporting. If you've ever used the sign in with Google option on a website, you'll know that currently people using Google Apps can authorize any third party mobile or web application which supports login with a Google Apps account. Behind the scenes, this uses OAuth to read the user's account data to integrate with Google Apps, such as Contacts, Calendar, and Drive. Each authorization grants an access token, which is then logged in the admin console. Previously, admins can review the current state of OAuth tokens granted by people within their domain using the Security tab in a user's profile. However, this meant the admin could only see tokens on an individual user basis, but could not access the change log of authorize and revoke tokens. With this launch, we're adding a new audit report that allows admins to view both authorize and revoke events for OAuth tokens within the admin console report section and reports API. Let's take a look at these OAuth reports in the admin console. From your admin console dashboard, go to reports, then under audit, you click token. In the event description, you can see a summary of the events, including the event name, which is the action the user performed, such as authorize or revoke, the application name, the scope, and the date the event occurred. For example, we can see here the admin has authorized access to Google Apps Administrator Fundamentals, and we can see the scopes this application requires. You can filter log entries by various criteria, say, find all revoke tokens, authorize tokens for a particular application, or tokens authorized by specific users. You can also choose which additional columns the data is broken into. It's also possible to export or download this report. Admins can use this new audit report to find out what new apps have been installed by individual users and if needed, can revoke access using the security tab. This improves admin visibility and control over access of third-party apps by users in their domain. For example, if we wanted to revoke the OAuth token granted to the Google Apps Administrator fundamentals, we would simply find the admin user access their profile, select the security tab, and under the section authorized access, we find the particular application, and all we'd have to do is click revoke. Optionally, admins can also revoke data grants using the directory API. The log shows data delayed by a few hours and keeps data from up to six months ago. In addition, admins can use the reports API to set up a push notification for OAuth authorized and revoke events generating an alert when certain events happen. The next update we're going to look at is the admin control of link sharing for Hangouts video calls. By default, all Hangout video calls are restricted to users inside your organization's domain. In October, we launched the ability for Google Apps customers to share links to Hangout video calls so that external guests can request to join even if they're not explicitly invited to the Hangout. Basically, this helps guests avoid errors when joining with alternate Google accounts. We're now giving greater control over this feature with an option in the admin console to enable the guest access by default. This means that external guests can also join a Hangouts video call in your organization if they have the meeting link, 
They do not need to be invited and sharing does not need to be manually enabled. Let's look at this in the admin console. Select Google Apps, then go to Talk Hangouts and under General Settings, you'll now see a new option for video calls saying all video calls begin with external guests allowed to request access. If you select this option, then you're allowing guests to request access to Hangouts. But remember, you can still approve or deny those trying to join with the link. This flexibility gives you the control to hold open or closed video calls. Choosing the Allow External Users option also enables coworkers to join from their private accounts. This feature can be especially useful for customers who don't rely on Google Calendar to schedule meetings or those using the Microsoft Outlook Hangouts plugin. It also provides the best experience when using non-Google integration services to connect to other video conferencing systems or to phone-only conference calls, extending the reach of Hangout video calls for your business. To request access to join a Google Hangouts video call, all guests must be signed into a Google account, such as Gmail. It's important to note this is a company-wide setting, so it'll apply across all users across all organizations. Well, that's the end of the admin specific section. Let's move on to some updates relevant to your end users. First off, there are some new security tools to help improve online security. These updates are intended to help your Google Apps users take more control of their security online. There's a new devices and activity dashboard, which gives your users additional insight over the devices accessing their Google account. Let's visit the dashboard and check out what a user can see. The page shows a comprehensive view of all devices that have been active on an account in the last 28 days, or any that are currently signed in. Plus, it shows the last time and place you used it to access your account. In case any suspicious activity is noticed, there's a setting to immediately remove access to your account from a device or change your password. To do this, follow the steps under Secure Your Account. We're also launching the Security Wizard for Google for Work accounts. Users can access the wizard at g.co forward slash account checkup. The security wizard guides users through steps they can take to turn on or adjust security features, and it only takes a few minutes. For instance, they can check or provide contact info for account recovery if the domain security policy allows it. They can review recent account activity from various devices and locations, again highlighting if anything looks suspicious. And finally, they can check account permissions to see what apps, websites and devices are connected. Security in the cloud is a shared responsibility and keeping your company information secure is at the core of what we do every day. By making your users more aware of their security settings and activity on their devices, we can work together to stay a step ahead of any bad guys. This month, we're launching a new extension for Chrome that lets your users open files from Google Drive directly into a compatible application installed in their computer. This includes apps like advanced image and video editing software, accounting and tax programs, or 3D animation and design tools. So, no matter what they keep in Drive, using the web to access and manage files doesn't mean they're limited to using applications that only work in their browser. To get started, your users will need to install the latest version of the Drive app for Mac or PC and sync their files. Using a Chrome browser, they visit Google Drive and right-click on the file and select Open With to see a list of compatible applications on their computer that can open that file. For example, you can choose to open a PDF file with Adobe Reader or a .psd file with Photoshop and make their edits and save changes back to Drive, which will then sync across all their devices and with all their other collaborators. They just need to make sure that they have the new Google Drive. For details on how to switch between versions, see the links below the slide. I'll finish up with some brief updates to the mobile apps, starting with more modern Gmail and calendar apps for Android. Email and scheduling are two of the most commonly used tools at work, and Gmail and Google Calendar have been at the core of helping our apps customers get things done. The new Gmail app on Android has a more modern style, sleeker transitions, and supports other email providers, while the new Google Calendar app on Android was built to save you time and help you make the most of every day. Both apps are available today on all devices that are running Android 5.0 Lollipop, the new Gmail app supports all Android 4.0 Plus devices, while the new Google Calendar app works on all Android 4.1 Plus devices. 
we're also working hard on versions for iOS devices. And for our iOS users out there, there's the new version of Google Drive app for iOS, which is optimized for iOS 8, and it's available in the App Store today. The app includes some new security and convenience features, including opening files from Drive and saving back to Drive from other apps on your device, unlocking Drive using Touch ID, and saving videos from Drive to your device's camera roll. To download the new version, check out the link to the App Store below the slide. And lastly, we want you to stay informed. If you're looking for a full rundown of all the features released last month, then check out the Google Apps release calendar, where you can see the date and type for each release. Or alternatively, check out the What's New in Google Apps newsletter for all the updates and more info on what they mean. You can find the newsletter on the What's New page above the release calendar or in the link below the slide. So that's it from us this month. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your comments and questions below. This has been What's New for Apps Admins, November 2014 edition. Thanks and catch you all next month.